In this video, we're going to be taking a look at estimating the difference between um, population proportions. So estimating the difference between P1 and P2. Very similar to what we did with estimating the difference between means, but here we're going to be estimating the difference between two population proportions instead. Now, in terms of our conditions for inference, they're going to look pretty familiar at the beginning, right? We need two simple random samples, and um, also the samples have to be independent. or again, unrelated, is another good way to think about that. They have to be two separate, distinct, unrelated, simple random samples from the larger population. And then the other thing we need here, since we're estimating proportions, normally we check our NP hat and NQ hat to make sure that they're greater than 5. That now has to be true for both groups. So N1P1 hat has to be greater than 5. N1Q1 hat has to be greater than 5 n2p2 two two hat greater than 5 and n2q2 two two hat greater than 5. So basically what we're saying here is that there has to be more than 5 successes and failures in both groups. And again, that just ensures that we can use the normal approximation to the binomial. Um, and so basically that's what the that's the distribution that the calculator program is based on and that the by hand for computation formula is based on also. So if this is not met, then none of our computations uh, would actually necessarily hold true. Okay, so these are the things that we need to check. Two simple random samples, they need to be independent, and we have to have more than five successes and failures in both of our groups. And as long as those are met, we're, we're safe to proceed with our calculations. Now, in the calculator, the thing that we will use is we will use the 2prop z int. 2prop is reflective of the fact that we're dealing with uh, two proportions, so two separate groups. Int is because we're finding a confidence interval. And as long as this is met, we know that our data follow a normal distribution, or I'm sorry, the p-hat distributions um, are normal, and so it's going to be based on the z. Here, again, because these are proportions, you don't have to make a choice between the z and the t. Proportions are always based on the z. Okay. So let's take a look at an example of one of these. This is some data that's looking at um, personality type preferences in marriages. It says, Isabel Myers was a pioneer in the study of personality types. She identified four basic personality preferences. Marriage counselors know that couples who have none of the four preferences in common may have a stormy marriage, unsurprisingly. Uh, Myers took a random sample of 375 married couples and found that 289 had two or more preferences in common. So our group that had two or more in common. It did say it was a simple random sample. We had uh, in this one a sample size was 375 and there were 289 successes which means that they had two or more preferences in common. Okay that's our first group and so this is N1. Our second group, it says Myers took a, uh, another random sample of 571 married couples. Only 23 had no preferences in common. Okay, so this is none in common. It was a simple random sample. It's our second group. Its sample size was 571. And there were, uh, whoops, sorry, 23 successes. So here a success is counting as none in common. 
And then it says, find a 99% confidence interval. For the uh, difference in population proportions of married couples with two or more in common versus none in common. So we want to compare those rates. Okay. So first things to check. Do we have two simple random samples? Yes, we do. That was actually stated as part of the problem. Samples need to be independent, unrelated. It did say that this was one simple random sample of 375, and this was a separate simple random sample of 571. So the likelihood there is that they are independent. And then we need more than five successes and failures in both groups. This group has 289 successes. That's clearly more than five. And out of a group of 375, if there were 289 successes, there were definitely more than five failures because the remainder of that 375 would be failures. So there's more than five successes and failures in that group. In this group, there were 23 successes. That's greater than five. And 571 minus 23, also definitely greater than five. So our sample size criterion is met here as well. Since our conditions for inference are met, we can go ahead and keep going and actually calculate this uh, confidence interval and then we'll interpret it as well. So from our two, or, whoops, sorry, two prop z int, that's what we want to select in the calculator and then I'll show you how to set this up. So we go to stat, all the way over to the right to, whoops, over to the right to tests and then you're going to be scrolling down for a bit. There it is, two prop z int. Okay, we want to select that. When it asks you for x1, it's asking you for the number of successes in your first sample. So we had 289. Our sample size in that sample was 375. In our second group, our number of successes was 23. In that group, out of a sample size of 571. And we wanted a 99% confidence interval, so we'll just leave that there. And then calculate. And here's what we get. Okay, it gives you your interval at the top. Those are those values. It gives you P1 hat, tells you the proportion of successes in the first sample, that was 77. P2 hat, proportion of successes in the second sample is 4%. So if we're asking ourselves, is there a difference between the two groups? I would say that there is. Um, and then it also gives you the two sample sizes there. Okay, so the interval that we got was again 0.67058 to 0.79019. Okay, so what does this actually mean when we go to interpret? We are 99% confident that. Then what we were finding here was the difference in population proportions for these two groups. So let's talk about this first group first. We are 99% confident that The population proportion of married couples oops, sorry, with two or more preferences in common and then we want to know how does that relate to the second group well both of these are positive indicating that the first group has the greater proportion how much greater? About 67% to 79% greater. Okay, so proportion of married couples with two or more preferences in common is between 67% to 79% greater than the proportion of married couples with no 
preferences in common. And again, intuitively, I think that makes a lot of sense. We would expect the married couples with commonalities for there to be proportionally more of those because generally speaking, people with more in common tend to stay married longer. And how much more do we see in that difference in proportion? Quite a drastic margin, 67 to 79% more married couples have two or more preferences in common versus none in common.